Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Joachim Wiersma and I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. So most of the time it's fairly cold, windy, we just had the storms. But uh, today it's a very uh, nice bright day. So I thought this is a nice moment to uh, start filming with this uh, new uh, care uh, collaboration. And today we're going to talk about uh, this beauty over here, it's the Epicatlea René Marques. Yes, I think that's that's how you pronounce it. Or uh, Marque Marquise, some people say, but I uh, like to refer to it as uh, Marques. Um, well, before we do that, um, mine is not in bloom. So I found a picture because it has beautiful blooms, especially the colors are very bright. And I think this picture will not do the, the colors justice because it's a little bit uh, over... Um, overexposed but it has a uh, beautiful green and orange tinges and uh, tinges to it and also the shape of the bloom so i will have the bloom in a, in a picture by now and that also allows me to um pr uh, yeah uh, um, share the other participants for this care collab so you will have the names of those uh, in uh, those growers in the screen as well and of course, I will encourage you to guys to check their videos out as well. Especially if you like to buy this orchid or you have it and you want to know more about it. Uh, we all share our uh, care, of course, today. And uh, all that care is uh, based on different climates. So that's why I started this video by explaining that I'm a, a grower from the Netherlands. So, uh, yeah, like I said, um, check them out. I ha will have their uh, links in the video description. So yeah, René Marquez, let's grab the orchid and I'm filming this for the first time with my new camera and my microphone on. So uh, I think this is uh, an upgrade as I have uh, previously had. Um, because now I can move around and I like that because I think it's nicer to watch if there's something is happening, etc. Uh, it's personal taste, but therefore I, uh, this is the time to invest in, uh, invest in a new uh, camera and a new mic. Because I like filming and I'm planning on doing more videos. But uh, yeah, this is uh, my uh, René Marquez. It's not the biggest plant yet. It's, I have it now for about three years, I think. Two and a half, three years, something like that. But it's a nice uh, shaped one. This is the last cane from uh, last growing season. So I hope uh, uh, that was a dead sheet full of, but I hope this one will make, um, of course, new growth this year. And I think they can be, be even a little bit bigger than this one. Um, because I saw a few on uh, different videos and they were quite a little bit bigger than this one. So that would be nice, of course. But so far, it's a very, uh, for me, a kind of easy growing orchid. Uh, I have it, I think you would class it uh, intermediate light, torch height li uh, light levels. Um, even though the leaves are fairly dark, I think this receives quite some light, but I, it might even do uh, well uh, when you have it on uh, more light. So uh, with epidendrons in general, Cattleyas as well, of course. But uh, yeah, I keep it intermediate, I would say. But, yeah, but what's intermediate and when is it's high? It's just based on experience, I think. But it needs quite some light, so let's uh, put it like that. So yeah, I don't have it in bloom, but luckily I have a picture. Uh, when it's in bloom again, I will make uh, more uh, pictures because I need a, a little bit better uh, picture of the colors. So, and I already see, because that's a problem this year, I have in my uh, greenhouse, I hope you can see them, those little green things, aphids. And this one uh, tastes very uh, well, I believe, because this one, uh, is always covered in uh, aphids, even on the stem here, uh, just above my finger. It's a little bit too bright, I think. Well, yeah, I think you can see it now. So this one will get a spray afterwards. I spray it uh, with uh, alcohol and a little bit of dish soap and that kills them. So that, that works perfectly fine, but they keep coming back and back. So. Yeah, but anyhow, it's just something that we need to deal with. This bot has uh, aphids on them as well. They really like the bots and new structures. So uh, new canes, but really bots. So yeah, 
I said mine wasn't blooming, but we already saw them, the buds. And this is something uh, I didn't knew, knew but uh, and luckily I do. I keep the flower spikes on. Here we have another one. Because they branch. And this, especially, yeah, let's start with this one. This is the oldest one. And you can see, probably see these little sort of branches are all new flower spikes coming from that old flower spike. So if you have a flower spike, don't cut it off. Even though it might look a little bit brown here and there, but as long as you see enough green like this part, uh, just keep it on. This end, I think this is a nice example. It's very brown as you can see compared to the other one. This you should have uh, uh, cut off, but the rest is still green, so leave it there. And I think this is a cakey. I never had it happen. I had no idea, but yeah, of course, uh, Arcus can make cakey, but I didn't know this one could make it them from the flower spike as well, like sort of like a family opposite. But yeah, it doesn't seem like buds to me. It really does seem like a cakey, so that would be very nice because here we have buds. You can see this one has probably two little buds, uh, so they do look very different. And as you can see, it's a branch, a branch. And this part is uh, brown, so I could cut it off, but the rest is green and they shoot out again from flower spikes. I had it happen all the time with this one. So now I have uh, three flower spikes still alive. Uh, one is a cakey, but it still can bloom someday. So I will leave it on, like I said. That was something that's a, a great tip if you didn't know it already leave them on because it will bloom for you again. So this is a little bit about the plant and I think it's doing better if you compare the canes uh, with one another. This one is bigger already and thicker, so that's nice. And I grow them in cell watering. I like to have a top layer of pebbles, just the regular pebbles. I like the look of them. And um, yeah, I use sometimes use Lekka. Most these days I uh, prefer the pumice, but uh, this one apparently has Lekka. But I will take it out. Maybe it has some pumice in as well. But it looks like it's Lekka. So I put it down here on the little table. I already had prepared for filming, so I can take it out of the pot, out of the outer pot, and let it drip. Meanwhile, so we have uh, roots here, as you can see. And we have all the roots, we have new roots. Let me, um, I'm sorry you guys, but I see more roots on the back. So let me show you those as well. Because these are a little bit green, as you can see, so those are alive. So we have quite some roots, we have more here. This is dead, what's coming from the, well, this one, not sure, but this one, this is a strain. So this is the actual root, but uh, I'm sorry but um, the rest is dead, so I could take that one off. But it has quite some nice, uh, very nice root system, actually. And this is in this pot, uh, like I said, at least two years, but probably three. Um, yeah, the last repot, I'm checking the uh, label. I'm sorry, you guys. I should do this in frame so you know what I'm doing, but it says 2019, and that's a repot date. So I did repot it. Yeah, it was in February. 2022, so that's now two years, just recently two years in this pot. So yeah, about um, in that time you may expect some older roots that die off. Those are the roots we just saw, those brown roots. That's how they grow. So don't panic, I just leave them in, but I needed to um, get used to it, to be honest. Especially when you start growing uh, self-watering. In my experience, it wasn't that easy to start with. So I had a lot of uh, root uh, die back. So when you see those roots in a pot, yeah, you need to get used to it that a orchid, uh, as a uh, Rene Marquez, does get all the roots and they die off at some point. So nothing to be worried about, as long as uh, those are old roots. If the root system completely starts to die off, yeah, of course you have a problem. So um, what I also like to do, and I did put it back, but it, I wasn't planning on doing that <laughs> because I need it out of the pot for this demonstration. And it's a care guide, so I will grab my pH meter. This is what I do every three months 
sometimes four months, but I do a general check. So you have, I hope you can see, I have water in there. This is the outer pot and I have a pH meter. So what I do is I just check the pH. I have the meter directly in that reservoir and I do this uh, as, as most as, no, not, not every, uh, as, as often as I can, but li like I said, every three to four months. And sometimes I just pick an argot and I, um, I think it's now time to check the reservoir and just pick it. And this one is a, is a nice ex uh, example because I'm already filming and I can demonstrate. So let's see uh, what we have. I should push hold. Oops. Yeah, that worked. And now I hope I can show you guys this without the glare. Let me see. So this is 6.83 and the temperature was, I'm sorry, is uh, 24.9. As soon as we have a little bit of sun on the greenhouse, the, the temperature starts to warm up quite quickly. So that's nice. And this one uh, likes it. So the temperature is beautiful. Also the pH. I'm very happy with the pH, 6.8. So what I do when um, the pH is too low, I put uh, some calcium dolomite powder in it. And it helps to rise the uh, uh, pH again. And it's calcium and magnesium based. So they, it's also uh, something that the architect really like. And that's what I do. And I pH it back or uh, uh, upwards again, let's say in between seven and eight. So that sounds maybe a little bit high, but I adjust the pH of the water again around 6.3. So every time I water my orchids, they have a pH of, uh, the water has pH of 6.3. I don't change that much. Sometimes it's six, but uh, let's say it's most of the times it's just uh, around uh, 6.3. So and what you also can do, if you still, let's say you had a nice pH in your pot and your, your orchid isn't doing well and the roots are still dying off, uh, this is a parts per million meter. Parts per million meter can, um, can also uh, give an indication if you have a problem. Uh, the problem then would lie in your fertilizer. So if it's too high, this will show up a quite high number. That's not good either. Well, actually, this is a good example. It's not too high. I have it on hold so you can see it, but for me it's a bit too high. So what we have here is, I hope you can see 214, was it? Yes, 214 parts per million. For me that's too high because I don't like to go overboard. I don't like to go over the 200 mark, so that's my limit. So as soon as I see this, I flush. Uh, I flush the orchid, give it just pure RO water. Uh, I don't pH it down anymore. I did that, but I don't do that anymore because the pH isn't as high. Um, it's most of the times around 6.8, 7, and that's pH it already has in a pot, so that's okay. Uh, but 200 is too, too much for me, even though we just saw the root system is okay, so it, it doesn't do harm. And I know growers that like to uh, to uh, give them even in cell watering a pH of 200 or even more, but I don't like that. I give mine, all my orchids, basically all my orchids in cell watering in winter, uh, parts per million, so a feeding level of around 50 up to 80, uh, sometimes even less, sometimes 30, but just depends. If it's very cold, dull days, they do not march. I just give them, barely give them any feed. But in summer, it goes up from, yeah, let's say 80 to 150. Most of the times it's, it's some, somewhere between 100 and 150. Uh, because then, especially these guys, they like the warmth, the light, they start to grow, they start to push out uh, uh, buds, as we can see. So there's active growth, even though it's not a new cane or something, it's, it's pushing out uh, bloom. So it needs something. On the other hand, this was 214. And I just um, said the amount that I fertilize with, which is uh, normally, like I said, let's say around 80. So that means that this doesn't take all the fertilizer. So I can, uh, can um, flush this one. Because uh, you might think, well, yeah, it's normal to flush. Well, I don't do that. I always need to do something uh, different. Um, also growing my orchid cell watering, what I don't do is flush. If, I, if, if in my opinion it, it doesn't need to be flushed. 
So um, what happened over time is, uh, let's say, around five to six months, if you don't flush, the pH, at least in my uh, experience, does drop. It doesn't rise anymore, but it does drop, and it can drop quite um, severe. So I had some cases there where I had a measurement of 3.9 pH. So that's way too low, and then you lose a root system fairly quickly. So that's why I do these checkups. Just check up what, uh, what the pH is. This time it's a good pH, but I have a little bit too much parts per million. So I will uh, flush this when we do, uh, are done with the uh, care collab. So yeah, that's basically it. I think I gave quite a lot of uh, experience. Um, she had quite some experience, I should say. So yeah, I have even this one. I, that doesn't happen often uh, in my care, but this one has a quite a little bit of fertilizer residue there, I think. Because as soon as I start to fertilize them above the 200 mark, I see these um, fertilizers, these crystals, the, almost the salts build up around the uh, pot. If I stay under uh, the 200, I don't have build ups. And that's better because the roots don't like to be uh, surrounded in too much fertilizer. So you, I think you can better feed them a little less than too much. So this one, uh, this is one of the, the rare ones here that has uh, a salt built up because I, uh, I, uh, I have a sort of system running, I think, where they take up what they basically get and that's a beautiful circle. So it goes out and it comes in and it goes out and it comes in. That's basically what I try to say. But some don't need as much as this one, apparently. Probably when it starts a new growth, I think it will uh, take a little bit more fertilizer. So yeah, I think I shared uh, basically everything. And of course, as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Let's put the arcade back. I have a, my a wireless mic. I can do this. <laughs> this is the place where it hangs in my uh, greenhouse. I don't like to touch, let them touch. Because of the uh, pests, these are touching. I will uh, fix that uh, in, in a second. That's not for this video. But, uh, and I will spray it, definitely. So um, that's the first thing I will do. And after spraying, I will give it a flush. So if there is some residue from the spray, spray coming in the re uh, reservoir, I will take care of that straight away, of course. So like I said, this is uh, basically it. I think I managed everything um, that I knew about this orchid. It's a fairly easy one. So, uh, and uh, well worth it, I think. The blooms are stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. No fragrance, uh, as far as uh, I could um, uh, detect. So, I th uh, yeah, mine uh, doesn't have fragrance. I think they all do not have fragrance, but I don't know. So I will check out the, out the other videos of the other growers. Maybe someone has a fragrant one, but I don't, sadly. Um, so yeah, if you didn't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. And for now, thank you for watching once again. And I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.